Hello YouTube. This is the Python 3 for absolutely beginners. So let's get started. The first, uh, the Python 3 installation. You can simply go to Google and uh, search Python 3 installation. Download Python. Down. Uh, because I'm using Mac, so it auto detected that uh, I'm using Mac OS X, so I can download it. If you are using Windows or Linux or others, you can just simply click here, here, here. And then after the package is downloaded, you just follow the guide step by step. This is pretty easy. After the installation, Let's uh, first introduce Python variables. I'm using VS Code to type Python code. You can use whatever you want. Here, let's uh, variable store Python. Basically, in Python, every Python file start with this. Like uh, for Python, there are many type of variables like a uh, variable called integer, 100, or another kind of variable called float or double, like y is assigned to 3.14, and uh, like other variable called character, I'll give it an a, or give it a lowercase a, or local C, or another variable called string. And you can just simply print them. In Python, if you want to print this to console, you just use simple print command, like print x, print y, print z, print k, print q. So let's run it. Python variable, as you can see, uh, they are printable. 100, 3.14, uppercase A, lowercase C, string. And the other useful uh, built in function that uh, you can use type to print uh, this variable type. Like Type X, type Y, type Z, type K, type Q. Let's run again. As you can see, uh, 100 is type in, 3.14 is type float. For the others, Python just to treat them as a string. Uh, there is one special type in Python is that uh, null, null type. It's basically equal to null in C or C++ or in Java or in C or C++ or Java or near in GoNet, it basically means nothing. If you want to print this T, you find nothing is there. As you can see, it's just simply print out. If you give it a type, it be still, let's run it again, class now type. Okay. So this is the Python variables. Let's go to Python functions. Let's create a file called function. Let's steal every Python function. Start with this first line. Okay, we are talking about Python functions. In Python, there is a Special function called main 
main is the starter of the program and this is the entry point where the program runs we could see that this is the main function hello hello python 3 we run it function hello python 3 but in python you are free to create any other functions print uh, hello you can use whatever you want hello I'm in a function after this if you want to call this function you can just uh, print hello right here so we could see to hello hello python 3 hello i'm in a function and in python you can also pass parameters to the function that you are called like um, I print a greeting, I give a name, you can see hello. So when you call it, you can give it a name Jack. So we know that uh, hello Jack. And then you can call it multiple times, like hello. Cassie, like hello Jack, hello Cassie. So this is the Python functions. Let's go to Python if else statement. Let's create uh, if else Python. Starting with this. This is the code structure. Print uh, hello world, hello Python. Like right. the structure. Okay, so for if else, like we have a student whose score is uh, B, then we need to check that. Uh, if score is A, then we print uh, green. L if score is equal to B, we print uh, good. Or score equal to C, or score equal to D. Basically here means that uh, the score is either C or D. We print uh, OK. Else, the score may be E, F, G. I don't know if there are any score is E, F, G or not. So we print uh, no good. So yeah, let's run it. Python if else. We know that the score is B, it's printing good. If we change it to C, it should print OK. OK, as we can see, it's printing OK. If we change it to some H, it should only print no good. OK, as we see, it's printing no good. So yeah, this is the if else, if, l if, l if, else. So this is the Python if else statement. And then let's go to while loops. Let's create another file. Like 
there is a famous problem that uh, we need to print uh, 1 to 10 and the second problem is to we need to sum 1 to 10 so let's do that we print 1 to 10 like uh, uh, actually, before that, uh, there is a function, built-in function called range. Basically, if you use the range, as you can see here, you can, like, we want to print uh, uh, 10, like, we can give, it's, this is the start, and uh, this is the end. The end, the end will not be included. So it basically prints a 1 to 10. So let's do that. It's like uh, actually we don't need we don't need range function in order not to cause too much confusion here. I'm just writing I'm just using the simple variable here. And we have a counter equal to one. Then we have a bio loop right here. Control less and equal to 10. What do we do? We print a counter. And after the printer, we need to add one to counter. So let's run this while. We could see that 1 to 10 is print. If we want to print a 1 to 20, how to do that? We change it 10 to 20. You should see. We should see 1 to 20. 1 to 20. It printed here. Okay. So if we want to print 1 to 10, we know how to add them. So it's still the same. We set counter to 1 and we need a variable to store the value the value of the sum and then we do the same thing less or equal to 10 we sum every counter and we plus 1 at the end yeah, we can print each sum after each iteration. I'm just comment right there. It's too much output. So let's run the program. Okay, that's the problem because this is string. This is integer. We cannot put that into one print a statement. Instead, we need to convert the integer to string. Let's run it again. As we can see, the final sound is 55. When we, when we add one, when, uh, for the first loop, when we add 1, the sum is 1. When we add to 2, the sum is 3 because 1 plus 2 is 3. When we add 3, it's 6 because 1 plus 2, 1 plus 3 is 6. When we add 4, the sum is 10. Actually, let me do this. Um, I can do this. No. Counter equal to actually this is much straightforward. So you know that when the kernel is one, the sum is is one. When the kernel is five, the overall sum is fifteen. One plus two plus three plus four plus five is fifteen. When kernel is ten, the overall sum from one to ten is fifty-five. 
So yeah, this is pretty simple, right? This is a while loop. Next, let's see how for loop works. Let's create another Python file. Like for loop, we do the same thing. Like we print uh, 1 to 10 to 10 firstly, and then we calculate uh, we sum 1 to 10. So basically, it's the same thing. Like here, I'm not using the plain index. Like originally, we are having a variable that, uh, that index or counter. Assign to sum, assign assign to one, and then later we increment the counter for each loop. Here, I will use the range function. So if we want to print one to ten, what we need to do is this is a fourth index, four i in range starting from one. Ending in 10, 11 is not included. Here I'm just simply print i. Let's see if the curve works. Follow. As you can see, it print 1 to 10. This is much neat format than the original while loop. Okay, then let's do the sum from 1 to 10. We still need one value to lock the sum, and we doing the same thing with the original format. 1 to 11, here we plus array i right here. After that, reprint sum. Actually, we can do the same thing for the uh, like before, we can print each i right here. We can also print each sound right here. So let's do that. As we can see right here, it's basically the same output as before. And the final sign is still 55. So it basically that uh, the four or bio loop they can interchangeable used. Wherever any place people can use while, people can also use for. But there are some common conventions like for unlimited loops we use while. For this limited range loops we just use for. This is a common convention. You can use either run at close you want. This is for for loops. Next, we talk about strings. This is the basic structure of every Python program. Like for strings. String could be anything. Like this is a string with double code. This is also a string with single code with triple code. This is also a string. In Python, they can be used uh, uh, interchangeably. If we print string one, or print uh, string two, or print uh, string three, they're basically the same. Okay, they are the same. But 
but there are slightly differences. Like if you have a really really long string, like I have a long string one. If you use single code or or double code, like this is a long string. A long string. If you want to expand to multiple lines, what you need to do is this is a format. Let's see. Long string should work. This is a long. This is a pretty long string. It's still in one line, but with multiple line. With triple code, you can see this is a long string too. Let's print long string two. What do you think? This, as you can see, it's still expanding multiple line. So here are the usage conventions. In code, this double Code single code could be used interchangeably, but for the triple code or triple quotation, they often used as the documentation of codes. Or if there are any string expanding multiple lines, then that's the usage. That's the use case for triple code. For otherwise, they can use interchangeably. For string, there are also some other usages. Like I have a string one called hello. There is a string two called Jack. You can have a string three that add add them together. So if we print a string three. What do we will get? We will get hello, Jack. And for string, there are also some other built-in function. Uh, we can get the string length. Let's run it. It's five. As you can see, for string one, it has five characters. So the length is five. So for the string two, if we check the length, it should return four because Jack has four characters. Let's run it. It's four. That's the basics of string. And next, let's see list. List two. Set up. Lists are a very important structure in Python. Lists is something like array or linked list in Python. So, uh, firstly, you can have uh, empty list, no this one, and then you add some data right there. Like we can add two, we can add three. If we want to print out this list, you need to use a for loop, like for each element. In list one, you can just print them out. Let's run code. As you can see here, two or three are printed. And for list, you can have variables of different types. Like we append a string right there. Hello. What we gonna get if we print the list? 
we will get two three hello as you can see here okay. after we append some data here we could also remove some data like we remove hello that we just appended if we print again we just got two and three we can continue to add more data we add 45 we print again 2345 and we can also reverse the list we got if we simply do the reverse right here what do you think the data will be reversed yes the data will be reversed okay and uh, here comes the challenge we have a list one and the list two we need to merge them together like we have list one we have some data one two three or one two five or one three five and we have data list two like two four six the first requirement is we want these two lists merged together like merge them together List one is before this two. How are you gonna do that? We can just uh, do this. List one plus this two. If we print this three here, what do you think we will get? Let me comment the about print. What do you think we will get? We will simply get one three five two four six. This is the merged list one and the merged list two. We can also this is a very elegant way. We can also do in a very uh, ostentatious way. Like we can have a list three. We initialize it to empty. And then we do some initial we uh, and then we do some loops that uh, we do this thing. Firstly, we copy all data in this one to this three, and then. We copy data in this two to this three. And then we print this three again. What do you think we will get? We will get exactly the same thing. As you can see, we still get one, three, five, two, four, six right here. Okay. Here comes the third challenge. This is still the data. The requirement is I want to merge them together in ascending order. What are we going to do? Well, we could have a result, which is initialized to empty list right now. Result, the result is assigned to this one plus this two and uh, there is one function that uh, sorted we could sort result and then we check the data in result we should see the output is one two three four five six right 
Let's check that. You can see the data is sorted. Okay, the list has been done. And uh, let's go to slicing. Let's create a new file called slicing. And set a for slicing, like we have the list right here. We have the we have the array right here. We have one, two, four, five, six. For the slicing, the thing is that. Uh, the first gate the whole array data what we could do is just simply put so what we could just simply input like this so if we want to know if x is the if x has the whole data we just could do this Let's run the call. Slicing. You can see X holds the whole data of this array. Right. Second thing is we only want the first three data, first three elements. What do we will do? We could do is we starting from zero because uh, it's like Java is zero index starting from zero zero one two and we end in three three is not included so we print x again what we will get we will just get one two three that's that's what we got Okay. If we another thing is if we want to get the last two element. So if we want to get the last two element, what what we could do is zero, one, two, three, four. We starting from four and uh, we leave it empty right here so we know that we want all the elements after 4 so let's see if x holds 5 6 right now let's run it as you can see x is holding 5 and 6 there is another way to do that like originally we are using forward way to, to calculate the index. Actually, we can use the backward way. When we do slicing, the backward way is the, the last index is negative one. The last, the second and last index is negative two. So here, what we do is we can do this. Basically, we want starting from the last uh, two elements it should be the same result as you can see right here there is one another thing is right? and i have a variable that has all the data of array if i change the second element of this array to 100 then I print uh, array do you think uh, the data got changing let's see as you can see the data is not changing but uh, if we print X we should see the second element uh, in x is a hundred 
So what it means, the slicing is basically another copy. X is another copy of array. When we change the array or X, they will not impact the others. So when there are really complete data structures, you do not want to, to do slicing because that is very uh, that is very heavy. Need a lot of memory copying. So we are done with slicing. Next, uh, let's go to string split and join. Split uh, join Python. Like I have a string. This is uh, a good day. Like I want to split the string with the spaces. How to do that? This is pretty simple. Like I can give an x string one. I can just call split. I can put a space right here. If we want to print x, we will say, or we also want to know what is the type of x. And we just run this code. You can see this is the result printed from x, and the x type is a list. We know it's a list, so we know how to loop it. Let's run again. As you can see, this is as as you can see, this has already been output. So this is split, and and I want to do a reverse way to change this list to string again. So I could I could not use a join. X if I print a string two and the check the string two. Let me uh, comment and print here. You can see you can see string two has already been output and string two is a string. Actually we can use other, like we use dash to join x. What are we going to get? Instead, we have space between each string. We got dash right here. We can use some others. You can use whatever you want. Like we have this symbol. again as you can see this is a different output so this is a string split and a join next uh, we see tuples or two parts For two parts, like originally we know list, like we have a list right here, and then we can add some data to the list. And we can also, if we do not use the brackets, we use this, we know y is the tuple but can we add data to the tuple we can also add three let's run code as you can see it reports the error right here tuple object has no attribute append so if 
triple has no data called append, how will it be useful? Well, the thing is, when you declare a tuple, you need to initialize it. Like we have one, two, three. We have one, two, or three. That's right. You see, it didn't report any error. If we want to access the element of the tuple, it's basically the same as this. We access the first element, we get one. And there is also length on the tuple. The length is three. So there is already a list. Why we still need tuple? Well, tuple has a very important character that tuple is immutable. You know, a lot of bugs caused by mutability. List is mutable, but tuple is not, is not mutable, it's immutable. You cannot change values for the tuple. So it guarantees the, the program robust. So this is tuple. Next, we see sets. Like originally we have list. List is kind of like array or linked list. But for set, which is a different data structure, set is just like the set in math that uh, uh, we can add elements to this set, and and the element could not be duplicated in this set. Let's see some examples. Like firstly, we need to initialize the set. We could initialize like this. And then we add some value to set two, three. If we print the set or type set or then set. Let's see. You could see set value is one, two, three. Type is set. Less is set. What if we add a duplicated data here again? What we will gain? As we just say, set does not allow duplicated elements. Let's see that. You could see the same result. The elements in set is still one, two, three. The length is still three. Because there is an existing three right there. If we add three again, it will just be ignored. Because set found there is already an item right there. OK, that is set. Next, we see an important data structure called dictionaries. For dictionary, it's something like map or hash map in Java. We, you can firstly you can initialize an empty dictionary, or you can simply initialize like this, or you can when you initialize this dictionary, you can give it some value. like this. You can just print x, print uh, y, print z. As you can see, the first and second are empty dictionary. For the third, there are some values. 
like we have a student right here his name is Jack and the student also have some other attributes like age and gender what you could do is you can add like his age is 19 his gender is male address USA like if we want to print the information like you need to print this way in student there is one built-in function called items the items that were unpacked the student as key value pair so if we print these what do we want again because there is an age they still we cannot concatenate string not into string there is a value that is integer so what we need to do is put it as integer we run code again as we could see we got the all the keys right here name age gender address all the values right here and later i do not want to express the address information to the user what we would what we would need to we would just use their or delay function student address if we print this again we did not see address there so this is the dictionary okay we've gone through dictionary next and let's see this the comprehension this the comprehension Still stands uh, like what is NIPT comprehension? Let's see some examples here. Like I have a list which is like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Like I have a requirement right here get the even numbers what, what we will do that well we could see we have learned how to do that in a traditional way we could do like each element uh, in array we just uh, have some logic here if each element uh, is module 2 equal to 0 so we know it's even number we append to this result and then we just print this result we should get two four right here just uh, comprehension we got two four this is a traditional way we have one two three four five five nice of code but uh, if we have this the comprehension what we would do we would directly just one line code is now print right here each element for each element in array if each element module 2 equal to 0 just this simple 9 let's print again we got the same result we just basically convert this five or six nine codes into one code and this one nine code is more like Pythonic way 
and much more elegant. When people saw you code, coding like this, people know you are a Pythonic person and uh, the code you are writing is elegant. So practice list comprehensions. So this is list comprehension. Next, uh, we go with lambda expression. Send set up. For lambda, we can do this like um, we have two variables a equal to one, b equal to two, and we want to write a function to Calculate sum of a and b. Then we print c. So we define a function here. Get sum b. We can just simply return a plus b. So what we will get? We got three. So with lambda, we do not need to create a separate function. What we need to do is, we could just uh, create a lambda variable right here. We use the keyword lambda. Input parameter, and then we simply return a plus b. So if we do in the same thing, to see what's the result, we get the same result. So basically, lambda, as you can see here, is just a function. And there are many ways that lambda will be used together with the list comprehension. So we are done with lambda. Next, class. Now, we haven't defined any class in Python. So let's define one. So we define a student in Python, the root of the root class or root object uh, we call object. It's just like in Java, we all have a root class called object. In Python, there is a sense in right here. And uh, there is constructor called n. And the self here is just like this pointer in Java or in C++. We could write something here. And uh, we can write some function, write a grid function. Hello, give it an A. So, how will we use this? We could have a student. And then we could call this greedy method, Jack. What are we gonna get? Okay, let me just see. We forgot self right here. This is the, uh, just like this pointer in C++ or Java. In C++, we do not need to Pass it as a parameter, but in Python that is necessary. Let's do that. We could see when we initialize an object, the constructor will be called. And this when we call this function, it just print hello Jack. This is 
pretty much the same as the other language in like Java or C++. Okay, we see class next. Let's use Python to implement a stack. So let's define a stack. We will use the class that we just learned called stack. Self right here. First stack is basically last in, first out, or first in, last out. So we need uh, a list right here. For stack, there was some APIs like what's the size of the stack? And we also need to push the element into the stack. Because when we push, we push on top of the stack. And we also need to pop the element from the stack. We should pop the element which just got added. So what we got. And then we remove this element. And we return this to the class. There is also peak. We just, uh, the peak, the difference between peak and pop is the peak, we just uh, see what's, what's, what's the value on the stack, but we do not remove it from the stack. think that's it let's use it we initialize the stack then we add some then we push some value like push one push two push three then we print out uh, then we pop up the wrong value. It should pop up three, right? Let's see. We got three. So uh, actually, we forgot about another API called it's empty. equal to zero or not. So after we insert or push the data into the stack, let's print them out. We also use while loop right here. Is empty. While while the stack is not empty, what we need to do is we print out every element on the stack. So what we will get? We will get three to one, right? We got three to one, exactly the same. So this is the basic 
implementation of stack in Python. It use everything what we teached before, like it use the class, the list, list operation insert remove the bio loop, the function. Okay, this is stack. Okay, we've done with stack implementation. Let's do with queue implementation. Let's have a queue. Still the stand set up. Let's define a queue here. Initialize. This is a queue. And uh, for queue, we have what's the front data of the queue? We just uh, return the first data. What's the real data of the queue? For the queue, we could uh, in queue queue with some element we also need a DQ And uh, we also need another function called is empty. Okay, this is a queue. Let's do the test. We add one, add two, add three right here. Also the same. If Q is not empty, we do the DQ. So it should print uh, one, two, three, right? In the Originally in stack it prints three two one. It's not add, it's in queue. Try again. Yes. As you can see it output one two three. So Q is first in, first out. One is first in, it should be print out first in. A stack is first in, last out. So yeah, this is the queue implementation in Python. Okay, we are done with queue implementation too. And next, uh, let's do some cool stuff. REST API with Fast API. We are doing some web development with Fast API library in Python. Let's do that. This is the fast API GitHub link. Let's see. Firstly, we need to install fast API library and the Ubicon. Let's do that. Three install fast API. 
install install UV from next uh, we import okay let's uh, create a mail file still the same setup here we need to import from fast API import fast API we also need to create an app and then we we just get a root path get root path like we return hello fast API let's run that how do you run that you become man dash app reload you become main is the file name app is the app we created right here I think reload here is that uh, we could do hot reloading let's try that it's running at 8000 let me try to turn okay that works it returned low fast API good like 200 returned hello fast API okay that worked let's have some fun right here like uh, i have a student like id is one name is jack let's give it another student id is two name is mike and then we define get uh, Okay. How do you pass the parameter ID right here? Get student with ID. Then we need to check found equal to false we need to check each student get the key value each student if key is id and uh, the value is equal to the ID then we know we found we found it and we just uh, return the student uh, name if we not found return those to Student with this ID. Okay, it's hot reloading. Let's try again. Except the root still works. Let's give it some another name. Student ID. Student ID, student ID, one again. I need to put it here. So that is reload, it's reloaded. That is reload. Try again. You still worked. Oh, okay. We got Jack back. 
got two. We got Mac bad. Give uh, ID that is not exist. No student with this ID. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, this is the basic tutorial for fast API, and you can always try yourself. Right. I think uh, this is the tutorial for the Python 3 for beginners. I hope you guys can have a try yourself. Thank you.